just hasn't been a lot of accurate information out there on the internet about what Microsoft Flight actually is. So this video is going to be basically me walking through you a simple demonstration of what Microsoft Flight actually is. Now before we really get into the video, I'm sure a lot of you are asking, well, who are you? Who are you to tell me what flight is? Well, in the interest of full disclosure, I need to say that I was, in the past, a developer on Microsoft Flight. I served a one-year contract, and that was over one year ago. Currently, I have no current financial benefit to gain from Flight, and no, none in the future. I'm not a current developer. I don't expect to be a developer in the future. So I'm not doing this as my own benefit. I just wanted to kind of clear the air of dispel some of the rumors of what flight actually is. And honestly, with Microsoft's recent marketing, it's not helping my job at all. Some of the last web episodes have been just absolutely awful and kind of depicting Microsoft as chasing balloons, collecting coins, flying through hoops, and the, that is to a limited part some of what flight is, but it's up to the person that flies it if they want to do that or not. The option is there if you choose to take it and like that sort of thing. If you're more of a serious flight simmer, the option is there to ignore it. So let me go ahead and show you that. And again, right here, play instead of fly. Again, that's kind of enforcing some people's beliefs that this is more of an arcade kids game. And again, Microsoft's not really helping themselves much on that. Here's the basic menu you have right here. It's a much more simplified version of what you have in a lot of other flight simulators. Microsoft Flight Sim X had a pretty decent user interface, but it was still very complex and wasn't very welcoming to new users. X-Plane 10 is a great simulator, but the UI is absolutely horrible and it scares away a lot of new potential users. This is kind of a sticky, sweet, sugar-coated interface so new new users to flight simulators can get in and fly real easily. Now when you first start up Microsoft Flight you're going to have to do the first two missions. The first one is going to be maneuvering around some hot air balloons and then landing and the second one is going to be a uh, wedding party which is just fly out in the icon and land next to a ship. This is basically just to give new people some very basic information of how to use the flight, flight game. And once you're done with it, you have access to this menu and you can free fly, you can do missions, you can do whatever you want. You can fly how you want to fly, as long as you get past those two first missions, and it doesn't take more than five minutes to do. So right here you can see, the last time I flew, I was flying off the coast of Hawaii here. And if you want, you can just grab and drag your aircraft over to Maui, fly around Maui, you can go over here, change the angle, and uh, line up right here. Hit fly, and you can uh, take a quick landing at Hilo. Or you can click on Hilo, and you have a lot of information here. You have Hilo approach, you have radios, you have all the runway. You can click the runway, hit take off, and bam, you're flying off the runway. It would be nice if they had a uh, start from a parked position option, but who knows, that could come in the future. There's also a job board here. You can pick up various jobs, delivering cargoes. You can uh, deliver 477 pounds of aircraft parts to Hilo. You can do a $100 hammer, which basically is the term for just taking off a joy, a joy ride, landing at an airport and uh, enjoying a hamburger. That's just a pilot term for wasting uh, $90 worth of gas on a $10 hammer. And there's a lot of other just fun little things. Uh, you can do uh, biplane tours, medic flights. There's just a lot of different uh, missions you can take uh, for people that want to do a specific thing in flight. Some of us like to just fly around aimlessly. Some of them want to actually have an actual goal during their flying experience. Right here is the hangar. You can see I've got all the uh, current DLC aircraft. There's only five. You've got the uh, Vans RV6, which is a nice little sports car type of aircraft. Not going to be uh, used much for any of the uh, dirt strips. 
that are in the game. It's a fast, very nimble aircraft. You got the P-51. Uh, this one does not have cockpit. It's just basically a toy. It's for the people that just, you know, want to sit there and fly and don't really want to mind the instruments and gauges all that much. For anybody that's really serious into flight simming, I don't recommend this aircraft or this DLC. The Mall is another, another nice little full detailed general aviation aircraft. It's more of a short takeoff and landing so you can land at the more dirt strips, the short field takeoffs. It's a lot of fun and it can take up to six passengers, well five passengers plus the pilot and a good fair amount of cargo. This is the Icon A5, it's a little 100 horse, horsepower general aviation light sport aircraft. People call it the flying car, I call it the flying jet ski because that's what it more looks like. It's a very simple aircraft but it was made to be a simple aircraft and that's what it is. And you have the old classic Stearman biplane. It's a very rough, rugged, but again, a simple aircraft. Uh, the Stearman and the Icon is what you can get when you fly for free. And because the two aircraft that you fly for free are very simple, it kind of gives people the false impression that it is a simple game. Let's go ahead and take the Stearman now. I'm going to take off from uh, Hilo here. Runway 8. Alright, there we go. The annoying music is gone. Alright, so here we have is the classic Stearman. As you can see, the uh, cockpit is all very well detailed. Nice artwork. And you can see that all the uh, gauges and instruments are clickable, and you have a text readout of what each instrument does. Oil temperature, oil pressure, fuel temperature, or uh, fuel flow, sorry. So you can see that it is a very interactive cockpit. One of the really nice features, let me go ahead and uh, turn on the menu. One of the really nice features that I love about flight is the sounds that you get. It's a c whole combination of sounds, but if you just move to the, uh, the stick around a little bit, you can listen. You can hear the cables actually creaking and groaning and the control surface is moving as you move the control stick around. Same thing for the rudder. Now if you just move this rudder pedal slowly to the stops, you really don't hear anything. But if you move it quickly, you can hear it thumping against the stops. See, same thing for the... Uh, Move it slowly, nothing. Move it quickly. You can hear it thumping against the stops. That is a really nice detail feature. Another nice detail feature is, well, that's not one of the nice detail features. That's the auto start. Let's go ahead and turn it off. One of the nice features that I really like in flight is the new checklist. Access it by pressing Q on the keyboard and you have a nice checklist of procedures. You got normal procedures, hit the one and you can say before engine start you hit number two and this will walk you through the advanced procedures of how to start the engine. You can see right here it's just going through the procedures. It already did the first three procedures since I'm already at that state. So right now it's saying propeller control. It wants me to set the f RPMs to low, which is full back, so I can either, I have it bound to my joystick right here, or I can just sit here and click drag it, and you can see once I get to there, and it goes on to the next feature. Right here, it wants me to do battery, battery altimeter, and radio switches off. So right now you can see the radio switch is on, so let's turn that off, get to the next altimeter set so check and another thing you can do is automate the checklist so let's go ahead and click one alright 
that's that's a checklist. You can go back in and go into normal procedures. Before engine start, now we want to do engine start. So brakes, apply and hold. Throttle to 50%. Let's go ahead and move that throttle to 50%. All right. Now, mixture control to full rich. So that's forward. I don't have that bound to the, my joysticks yet, so I'm going to have to... All right. Magneto set to both full right. Battery switch to on. Starter push on. All right. We're going. Throttle to 800 RPM, which is back. Oil pressure. Check that. Verify. So, next item. Propeller high RPM forward. Altimeter radio switches on. And release the brakes. Now that right there, to me, says this is a lot more than just an arcade game. If it's taking you step by step on how to turn this aircraft on, this is a simulator, not an arcade game. I don't know of any type of arcade game that even lets you click a co uh, cockpit, let alone go from a, a cold state to an on state on any type of aircraft. Even if you, uh, let's say, I can turn the magnetos off here. And uh, let's say if you got something out of order that would not normally allow you to start the engine, because now the magnetos are off, the engine should not start. Now if you click the starter. Nope, not going to happen. Turn the magnetos on. Click start. There you go. Also, on the Stearman, the fuel level is actually this glass gauge right here, and you'll see this little thing at the top is showing us, it's floating at the top, so it's showing us that we have a full tank. Now, in order to uh, change that, you just hit the F key, go in here. Let's say we want 50% fuel, make things a little bit lighter. You can see that gauge has come down, showing us we have less fuel. Also, in a lot of the aircraft, you'll see that when you take less weight, the aircraft won't ride as low. And you can actually really get a good feeling for the weight. When you take some of the more uh, heavy cargo jobs, you can really get a good feeling for the weight of the aircraft. It gets really difficult to manage. So let's go ahead and off. Another nice feature about flight is an external walk around mode. Honestly, the external walk around mode right now has no real function other than to look at eye candy. That's okay with me because there's a lot of eye candy to look at. You can come in here, take a look at this uh, model up close. I'm using the, uh, the mouse scroll wheel to zoom in and out. get a good view, view for Hawaii. Even the wind sock works. If you uh, set the weather to a full, it'll be blowing in the direction of the wind. Right now, because there's no AI aircraft, the world is kind of spartan, kind of, you know, not populated. It's a little dry and boring. Uh, it gets better with multiplayer, but really there's not a lot of reason for multiplayer. Hopefully Microsoft will improve this. All right, let's get back in the steerman. Let's go ahead and on start it. And let's take off. Now, once you remove a lot of the training wheels and the uh, helpers, things get a lot more difficult and complex. I'm right now having to apply a right rider.
but without the seatbelt my system, which is not in the highest range, I'm still locked at around 60 frames per second, but everything pretty much cranked up to the maximum. And it performs amazingly well. Similar to the same computer, using FSX, I get about 20 frames per second. In flight, I get about 60 frames per second. Yeah.
Oh, let's go ahead and go back to the Eager. You can see in the paint schemes right here, there's a lot of paint schemes, but a lot of these are going to be unlockable. I've already unlocked a couple of them. This one, I uh, forgot how to unlock it, but if you look here, in the lower right hand corner you see, earn at least silver stars, silver on the three Icon A5 landing challenges. These landing challenges, I love these, they're a lot of fun, they're challenging even for a hardcore simmer. Because the, the first level of challenge is really simple, then they start stepping things up, they're adding crosswinds, they're adding dirt runways, they're adding slope runways very tight runways with trees on each side. Add with the uh, crosswind, that can get really hairy, you know? Some of the uh, bigger pucker factors I've had when flying this game is the landing challenges. So now let's go ahead and take this select aircraft, and you can just hop in right where you left off, fly, and bam, you're in the icon. Really simple to uh, change your kind of get a feel for some of the aircraft. A lot of people say this is a flying car. I can see that, but like I said, the aircraft was made to have that feel. Let's go ahead and go to the map. Here, missions. You can see right here a list of missions. Search and rescue, introduction to the vans. And a lot of these missions are unlockable. Again, you don't have to fly the missions if you don't want to. But quite a few of them are really fun. You can see that now that I'm in the achieve activi act activities, there are some new icons on my map. I can click on one. And here's Icon Landing Challenge 2. Like I said, these are a lot of fun. So let me go ahead and take you through this. When you go into one of these activities or challenges, it's going to set the weather and the time of day according to the settings of the challenge. So you can't really cheat it. If you have a crosswind and one landing, you're going to have to deal with a crosswind. Alright, here we go. So you can see already, there's the landing. Since this is number two, it's a bit more difficult than the first one. the uh, gear go down. You can see this is a dirt strip. Not something I would typically want to land in Icon. Let's see, I got four knots cross, which is not bad. And let's give it a little bit more power. You're judged on three criteria. Let's see how good I do. I'm not doing all that good. Alright, that's done. Little break. And I'll show you the three criteria which you're judged on. Alright, actually it didn't do all that bad. You can see you're judged on how soft you land it, the side slip which the uh, crossings will induce, and the runway center line, how close you get to the center line. My center line was really bad on that, but my side slip was actually really good, and my soft landing was really good. If I actually hit the center line, I might have uh, been able to get gold on this. And you can play it again until you get silver, since that's one of the unlock criteria for one of the paint schemes. It gives you some replayability. Uh, and, you know, hey, I would love to play this again, but interested in making this video not two hours. Let's go ahead and continue on. So you can see this is one of the hoop courses. They're fun. They're a little bit challenging, but again, this is one of the things that lead more on the side of arcade. Some people will like them, some people don't. If you don't like them, you don't have to do them. Let's go ahead and select the challenge, and I'll just show it to you really quickly. You can select what aircraft you want. If you want to do it really fast, you take the P-51. If you want to have a little fun at it, take the Vans. Let's go ahead and take the Vans. It's a lot better than taking a 300 horsepower Vans and a 100 horsepower Icon. And it gives me a chance to show you the Vans. while 
that's loading up. I have most of the what I call training wheels, the uh, flight aids turned off, except for auto ditch In these challenge courses, you can earn bonus points, like flying aerobatics or flying the course at night. You can fly the Stearman aerobatics mission as a flight pack to learn the maneuvers. Also, the faster you fly the course, the higher your score. Keep the throttle at full. The extra speed will come in handy when you need to climb. silver so obviously I can do a better job maybe add some more stunts in there but again you don't have to play it. does this make it an arcade game no does it add an arcade aspect yes except now let's just go ahead and go into free flight select aircraft I want to show you a little bit of the uh, more full detail aircraft here so actually let's go ahead and go into Oahu this is one of the uh, uh, DLC packs and this is how you get the vans in RV6 as you buy the uh, Oahu expansion pack and it adds this the rest of the islands for free you just get the big island but for $20 you get the rest of the islands Oahu which I think in itself is worth $20 and you also get the great vans RV6 again worth every penny of that $20. Uh, if you fly a game like FSX and you want to get a Vans RV6, you're going to be paying $35 just for the aircraft. Here, you get scenery, you get aircraft, you get missions, you get jobs. You know, you get a whole bunch of stuff. You can see all the different runways. Oh, didn't notice this, but they got water runways here for uh, amphibians. That's really nice. So let's go ahead and eight left, take off. Make sure I have my throttle back. Not sure how well Oahu is going to run at this resolution while I'm recording fraps, but I'm usually able to maintain at least above 30 frames per second, even in the most dense areas. And the same thing in FSX, I get maybe 15 frames per second. Microsoft has done a great job of streamlining the code in this to really work on low-end systems and high-end systems. Looks like I'm still getting 30 frames per second. That's nice, even when recording. Alright. You can see here, everything's been normal mapped. You got a really nice shader system, so you can see that leather is, you know, nice and, you know, even the stitches are visible in here. Yeah, fully animated again. You got the cockpit sounds, switches like you got the uh, the flaps. Now this type of aircraft does not have flap stages. Basically, the flaps will continue going down for as long as you press the button 
or until they hit the stop. Right there. And this is an actual uh, simulation of the aircraft. Let's see. Again, you can go into the checklist, normal procedures, and you have all your checklists right here. Close that. One of the really nice things I love about flight on some of these more advanced aircraft for night lighting, you see there. there's this rheostat that you can control the lighting levels of the dashboard lights. Something I really haven't seen implemented in FSX on third-party aircraft. You know, all these gauges are clickable. You've got a lot here. you got PSI and oil. Fuel tank left, right, both. RPM gauges, mixture, carbon heat. You know, a lot of this stuff is really simulated. Even the the suction gauge. Again, you can hop out of here. Canopy has a nice animation. Take a quick look around it. This is not for the hardcore simmer. You know, hardcore simmers may like this game, but really this is just to welcome people into flight simming so that a lot of things are simplified. You can do dawn, dusk, night. Dawn and dusk are probably the most beautiful times. Uh, let's do spring and a dusk, fair weather. Let's do, my favorite is among the giants. There's quite a bit more turbulence up here, but I love the way the clouds look. And let's go ahead and go back into flight. Again, it was about three mouse clicks, and I'm able to completely change the situation, timing, weather, every aspect of it.
that just looks bad. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Okay, that is hilarious. You know, it's not the best damage modeling, <laughs> but it gets the job done. At least it's better than FSX that just stops the sim the moment you crash. And you can hit fly. And crash again. I have no idea what went on. But it's actually kind of fun to watch. Anyways, well, there's some nice examples of the uh, the new particle systems that kind of uh, um, enhance the crash effects if you so choose to crash. Again, let's go ahead and exit free flight. Let's check out the mall. This is my favorite aircraft by far. It just got a lot of personality. It's very versatile. It's easy to land. It's easy to fly. It may not be the fastest or the sportiest of the, uh, well, the limited selection, but it's a lot of fun. Let's go ahead and select the aircraft. And with the mall, you can actually take a lot better cargo missions. So if you go to or Honolulu International, go into the job board. You can see right here we've got pigs, chickens, you got passengers, uh, you're gonna have to progress to passengers, I guess, you know, when you're low level, they don't quite trust you with people yet, even though that they're virtual people, and these also show you a distance that you have to travel. There we go, let's go ahead and take a load of chickens to, uh, to uh, Polu, I guess that's how you pronounce it, 131 miles away. Now, 131 miles at 130 miles per hour, you're thinking, what, an hour flight? But in case you're getting a little bored of just flying for an hour level, not doing anything, Microsoft has thought of that. Again, this is going to be one of those features that a lot of hardcore flight simulators are going to point to that and go, oh, it's arcade. But again, it's one of those things that you don't have to use. It's there for people that don't want to sit here for two, three hours just holding it level. Alright. Cargo is loaded, and we're ready to go. You can hear, actually the hear. aircraft is ready to go. Watch for traffic and taxi to the runway. You can actually hear them in the back, even though you can't Figures see Figures don't lie. We're too heavy for this runway. We need to carry less fuel or switch to a stronger aircraft. Alright, good piece of advice. Let's go into the fuel settings. You can see, uh, now, if I remember right, the range was 131 miles to the destination. If you bring it down, uh, see, that's pushing things a little bit. You can see the red arrow. That is kind of one of those, you're going to be difficult to take off, but not impossible. You'll want to be underneath the white line, but in some cases, it's just not going to happen. Um, you can put it for 131 miles and really hope you don't have headwinds, but you want, in real life, you really want to make sure that you cover your ass because there's no pulling over up there. So let's go ahead and set it to 172. It's going to be difficult. Again, like I said, if you're heavy, you really, really feel it. So you don't want to be too heavy or else it's going to make the aircraft extremely difficult. Dispatch, we are ready and all cargo is accounted for. Roger, you are good to go. Give me a call when you get there. All right. Now, since Honolulu International is one of the bigger, more complex runways, I'm going to switch to a different view. There we go. All right, so... I'm going to turn around. There we go. I'm not familiar with how the uh, runways are... Out, but I'm going to turn around here. The little cluckers back there are uh, definitely going to be active this flight. Hey, 
point it down the runway and take off. I'm overweight. We've got a really strong tailwind here, so I'm going to have to take a lot of the runway up. And I'm going to have to really be on the rudder in order to stay on the runway here. Also, I'm going to have to do all of this while not upsetting the passengers. Too much positive, negative, or lateral Gs. And the passengers, the chickens, are not going to be happy. You'll see that Stay here and do mark. your engine run up and systems checks. The runway is clear, so go ahead when your prep is complete. All right. I can be a realistic pilot and do the run ups, which is number procedure. You can see run ups right there. Or I can have a little fun and just fire a wallet and get down. Let's give it some flaps. There we go. It's a fun heavy. demonstrated crosswind 12 knots or 14 miles per hour. This is beyond the aircraft's rated capability and without proper tow brakes, which unfortunately Microsoft does not support right now, it's not really all that easy to uh, take off in this kind of condition. You know what? This is a bush plane. Let's take off. Again, this is one of those times to where you can either be arcade or you can be a full simulator. Let's get the tail into the air. Here we go. Much better. Chickens are still happy.
happy coming in at a nice light slow bullet. landing gear actually extended in the aircraft raised. Again, it's one of those small little things. So that's just a kind of a really base sample, an example of what Microsoft Flight is. And it can be what you make of it. It can be an arcade game where you chase coins it can be a flight simulator, as long as you don't want to fly a 747 from London to New York. It can be what you want it to be. And uh, that's basically what flight is. So, well, I hope you enjoyed my uh, explanation. And uh, hopefully you can forgive kind of uh, some of my flubs, but, you know, I'm not making this a big production. This is just me playing. So, uh, you know, hopefully you give it a chance. Bye.